here's the thing. Information tells while a story sells. That's what brings the joy and magic alive to flowers. So the big question is this, how can small business owners like us in the floral industry overcome the greed of order gatherers and bypass the deceitful games played by wire services? How do we market, sell, and deliver flowers online so we may break free from these antiquated practices and earn our freedom? Those are some of the questions we will answer on this podcast. I'm Joe Vega. Welcome to Flower Shop Secrets. Watch now on YouTube, like, subscribe, and ring the bell for new episodes. What's up, everybody? This is Joe Vega, and welcome to another Flower Shop Secret podcast. And today, we have Neville McKay from My Mother's Bloomers in Halifax, Nova, Co- Nova Scotia. How you doing, Neville? I'm fine. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> so we have to ask about the name right off the bat. How did you come up with My Mother's Bloomers for a name of a flower shop? Well, you know, Joe, um, my mom's, an, she was an avid gardener. She's 98, so she's not doing a whole lot of gardening these days. But she was a big gardener in England. And when we grew up, uh, she called us her little blooms, her little petals, her little blossoms. So come on, petals, come on, blossoms, come on, blooms. We're off to the garden to, uh, to do some gardening. And off we go and do our gardening. So that always stuck with me. I was always one of mom's little blooms, some of her little bloomers. And when it came time to open up the flower shop, a thousand years ago, it seems, um, that name sort of came to me. I said, oh my gosh, it's got to be my mother's bloomers. Because, you know, you have to have a little bit of tongue in cheek sometimes, you know, and there's so many flower shops and so many businesses that are flowers by so-and-so, designs by such and such, and, you know, pretty this and, and, and lovely that, which is great. But um, you've never been in on my mother's bloomers before until you've been in my mother's bloomers. And that's, that's just the tongue in cheek, giggle, tee hee, um, nudge, nudge, wink, wink sort of thing. And that's what makes people remember us as well because uh, we are unique. It's a great name. I mean, it's a great marketing tool. Like it, it markets is. itself. Right? It does. I think that your, your flower shop name is everybody's favorite. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something you don't forget, isn't it? No, you do not. I've and you know, once you've, once. Been, once you've been in my mother's bloomers, Joe, you know, <laughs> you know, you've been someplace. And that's the thing. You've got to have fun. You know, these yes. days, times are tough. Business is hard and yeah. people are, are difficult. So when you can have any amount of fun, have some fun. And if it comes down to making fun of the name of our flower shop, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Oh. I only had one lady she called when we first opened up. She called and she said, I'm calling long distance. And I said, that's nice. And uh, she said, I just want to tell you that I'm disgusted. I said, are you? I said, what's wrong, darling? She said, that's the name of that story. She said, it's disgusting. She said, you should be ashamed. Your mother should be ashamed. She said, she must be ashamed of you. And I said, well, you know, it was my mother's idea. And then she hung up. So, (laughs) but you know, again, again, those that like it do and those that get the joke do and those that don't, don't even bother. Don't even bother. You know, I I, I don't want to be... something for everyone as much as 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 i want to be unique to us and if you like that that's great if you don't you don't i know i know uh so how did you get started in the floor industry well again you know growing up with with um parents that that were very much into into nature and into plant life and gardening and 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 all things um natural it it was just sort of a, a a a natural progression to get into the floral industry. I, I grew up knowing the, the love that flowers can give and the power that they have from seeing my father come home from, he worked at a fire tower and uh, so he was an observation man, he worked for the lands and forest department, very masculine man, which is of course is where I get mine from obviously. And uh, he would come home from, from, from a day's work with those metal lunch boxes, you know, those ones that put lunch in, they go eek, when they open up, those old fashioned ones, he had one of those. And when I saw him open that up and it would be filled with wildflowers or cosmos or something out of his little garden where he worked for my mom, I thought that's love and that's what flowers do, you know? And I learned that so quickly. And then I got into the 4-H clubs and got into floral culture with 4-H. And the next thing you know, I'm, I'm often doing my thing in a flower shop. That's great. When did you open up my mother's bloomers? You just, you, you can't help the giggle when you say I, that. I gotta say, I, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Um, my mother's bloomers opened officially in 1992. So um, people say, how long have you had your business? I said, I always say, since I had hair, 
you know, because I think I had a little hair at that point, but not much, but uh, it soon disappeared. But yeah, 1992. So it's, it's going on close to 30 years now. Wow. So you've seen a lot. But you're also an educator, right, in the industry. So with, you know, you have experience uh, running floral programs. Can you talk a little bit about this? Well, you know, Joe, I think we're, we're all educators to one degree or another, because I believe you can learn something off everyone if you allow yourself to, to think and learn, um, because you really can. But I've been very fortunate because I know when I first started in the industry, I was apprenticing with a German master back in the day. So I learned how to, how to work with flowers um, that, that before floral foam was invented, because she was, she was an older lady then, so she taught me what it was like back in the day before floral foam with wire, chicken wire and moss and all that sort of stuff and clay and whatnot. So I learned all those sorts of things. And I, I, I believe that you really need to, to know where you came from, to know where you're going. And as an educator, I just, I, I get such a charge out of seeing people um, experience love through the beauty of flowers. And that's such a glorious thing. So when I get to teach people, um, and, and show them that, that this is a wonderful art form that needs to A, be respected, but B, don't be afraid of it because flowers can feel fear, you know? And um, when you do something with love in your heart to show those beautiful flowers, and remember that those flowers are gonna be used for someone to celebrate love or life somewhere along the line. And that's a pretty big deal. So to, to be able to get into doing some educating, and I work with Smithers Oasis, I'm on their design director's uh, team, so I get to, well, I used to get to travel around and teach um, the latest in floral design and education. Flowers can smell fear? Yes. Do you know, it's the same as when, you know, when you make a, I don't know if you cook it all, but you know, when you make a stew and you frig and you frig and you mess and you frig and you mess, and the more you frig with it, the worse it tastes. And yet someone else next to you can just throw a whole bunch of stuff in a pot, throw a little bit of this and do a little bit of that. And it's fantastic because they don't mess around with it. They don't mess around with it. They respect the ingredients and they know what they're gonna do and let those ingredients do what they're supposed to do. And that's what I believe, Joe, flowers should do as well. Flowers, the more you muck around with them, they're gonna say, ugh, leave me alone. I already know what to do. I'm already beautiful. You don't have to fiddle with me too much. So you're seeing this, this thank goodness, there's this renaissance going with, with floral design now with, with that very natural, let her go. If that flower is supposed to go that direction, let it go that direction. Who says you can't, you know, and that sort of thing. So we're taking so many, um, uh, so many, so much direction from nature now, which is such a glorious thing, rather than trying to contrive them into certain ways because that's where I want you to go. And that's when I say they can see fear and they can show ugly real fast, you know? Mm. That's just let it be, right? You can take the most beautiful flower and have it awful. It's the same as you can take the nicest piece of salmon or the most beautiful bowl of vegetables and make them taste terrible, right. you know, because you're not knowing what you're doing and don't respect the product. And there's, it's that sort of thing with flowers. So they can show ugly and they can see fear. Definitely. I've never heard that before, but they're definitely a, a learning lesson there. Uh -huh. Can you share any stories from your experiences on TV or on stage <laughs> um, yes, yes, there are many I can't. There was a young gal came up on stage because I tend to drag some people up sometime or invite people up on the stage to talk with me. And I'll say, listen, we're just gonna have a conversation. Don't, don't pay any attention to those people out there. We're just gonna have a conversation, especially when it's a student and I wanna show them a little something. And it just gets them used to being on a stage. And there was one gal, she said, I'm so nervous. And I said, this is what you have to remember. And this is something I always remember and I try to even say it out loud sometimes because I have always, I always shake. I shake like a leaf, all the times I have and stutter and mutter. And when people see you doing that and knowing that you're nervous, it can make you even worse. But if you go right out of the gate and say, look, I'm so excited, I'm shaking. I'm so excited, I stutter, I can't even stand it. They're excited for you because you're excited. So you tell people and you tell the world that I'm excited, not afraid, I'm excited. I'm so excited. And you know, you believe it because they'll believe it. And that's a glorious thing. That's a fun thing to do. But you know, um, television is, 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 is a strange thing. I've, I've been on television for, there's one particular show I've been on for over 20 years now. And um, to say I get nervous, I, I wake up nervous in the morning because you never know what's, and I say that's exciting and it is. But um, television is such an odd thing because you don't have an audience in front of you. You know, so to say, well, it's like us talking now. 
I don't know, there might be six people gonna listen to us, it might be 600, who knows? Um, who knows? I hope there's more than six, <laughs> we'll see. But you know, um, but you don't know. So I, I would say you, you pretend that they're all right in front of you. And so when you're just looking at this lens or talking to someone um, back and forth, you, it, it can be quite um, daunting at first. Um, but I remember doing a show in um, Wisconsin once, it was a morning television show. And I was on doing my shtick. And, and before I went on, I talked to the host. And I said, do you have a pretty big audience? And she said, I just, you know, cause I do regional television here. We have, you know, 30, 40, 50,000, sometimes 100,000 people, depends on the show that I'm on or the time of day. And so that's a pretty good audience, sometimes a little more than that. She said, yeah, she said, we have not, it's not bad. She said, you know, we have about two and a half, two and a half what? Two and a half million. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, that's, that's nice. She said, did I make you nervous? And I said, no, I think it's hysterical, hysterical. I said that that many people are gonna watch me do what I do. And then I always think it's so much fun, so much fun. I remember another little story, Joe, I was getting on, I was on a plane going to Chicago mm -hmm. to do a presentation. And I was sitting there and I, it struck me funny because I'd never been to Chicago, this was years ago, never been to Chicago and it struck me funny. And I kind of giggled to myself and the lady next to me, she said, what did you find so funny? And I said, well, I said, I, I find it, what I find funny is that, you know, I'm going to a city where they probably don't, nobody will know who I am. They, they've never heard of, of Halifax, Nova Scotia, probably. And I'm, I'm going there to speak and teach them floral design. I'm from a little town in the middle of nowhere. And I'm teaching people in the great big city of Chicago. And I remember speaking again to a gentleman from Holland and he was one of the bigger designers in the world. And I was doing a presentation with him. And backstage when we first met, I said, I am so excited to get to work with you. I can't believe I'm gonna stand on the stage next to you. And he said, you know, he said, I said the same thing about you. And I laughed and laughed. I said, don't be so ridiculous. I said, you know, you're so, you're just the big designer of the world. He said, you know, he said, how big was the town you came from? I said, 3,100 people. He said, my town had 2,500. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm from a small town, just like you. He said, I'm just a small town boy who happened to, happens to, to love flowers and gets to do what he gets to do, you know? Like my father said, he said, Neville, he said, that big mouse is gonna take you places one day. <laughs> going to get you in trouble too. Yeah, he was right on both. <laughs> so. <laughs> so all these shows, all these stages, you always were teaching floral design? Well, um, no. No, I speak outside of the floral industry as well, because I, I talk about marketing. I talk about putting your best foot forward. Um, I do a lot of MC work, uh, uh, um, keynote speaking for, for different events. Uh, I've spoken for nurses events and, and doctors and uh, construction workers, that was a blast. Construction, me. <laughs> We're talking to a bunch of construction workers. It was hysterical. But you know, we all have a story. We all have a story. We all have, have, have a, uh, um, a bit of entertaining and a bit of education. And when I do the, the, speaks, the speaking engagements outside of the floral industry, I often talk about how flowers can be related with every industry there is because um, they do celebrate love, happiness, life, sex, the whole works. And they do celebrate all that. And uh, I just tell my story and I get to speak to to a lot of different people and um, everything from our lieutenant governor here to our prime minister and all kinds of people that I, I've get, gotten to do presentations for or close to. It sounds like not only do you love the floral industry or flowers in general, but it sounds like you, you want to be able to spread the the that message to everyone else, including construction workers. Is that was what, what was the topic then? Uh, I think it was putting personality into your business. I think that's what it was because, you know, I often talk about you get one chance at a first impression mm -hmm. and don't blow it. So if, you're, if your office is your car, don't have it as a mess. And if you go in and say, excuse the mess, people are going to find it. It's that sort of thing that I speak, speak about. You know, I, when I speak outside of the industry, I find, try to find as much as I can about people and, and, and their profession. I was giving a presentation for the federal government. There was some mucky mucks down here and they were doing this, this convention and, and uh, it was all about workplace appropriateness. And, you know, I sat there and I listened to some of the speakers ahead of me and they droned on like old hornets. They were dull as dry toast. It was awful, awful. This old man with, with really curly hair and, and his tie was too tight. He was talking about so 
if Joe was talking to Sid and uh, Joe said Sid good, did a good job and patted Sid's shoulder, Sid might think that's okay, but Betty down the hallway might have seen it and Betty might not think that's not a very good thing to do. So Betty can fill out form number 643-7 and report Sid and Joe and they'll have to go to it. And I thought, oh my gosh, you're kidding me, right? So it was, and again, it was all about being appropriate work. So 90% of these people didn't have a clue who I was or the name of my shop. So it gave me great pleasure to get up on that stage and introduce myself. And I said, and I've, I've got a flower shop called My Mother's Bloomers. And I looked right at the man with the tie that was too tight and the big curly hair. And I said, sir, have you ever been in My Mother's Bloomers? <laughs> no. <laughs> what was his and response? I thought he was going to take a stroke. I thought he was going to take a stroke. All the local folks, you know, they went nuclear and sort of fell off the chairs at this point. And I said, well, you laugh. And I said, he's been in my mother's bloomer. So is she a couple of times, you know, and that's how it started. And I, and I said, why don't you loosen your tie a little bit? And it's, that's the kind of thing that I do outside of the industry. You know, um, I'm hired a lot as a, as an entertainer in that respect as well. I do a lot of philanthropy work and my husband is a guitarist and, and singer. So I will do um, a show, a, a floral show and have um, his as entertaining as well. Um, for whatever it might be, it be, you know, the AIDS coalition or the kids help phone or whoever it might be. That sounds fantastic. You, you want label yourself. Uh, I think you mix the words entertainment and educator, but then you call it something else. What was that? I meant to, I'm an entertainer. Entertainer. There you go. I'm entertainer. Was, I got to write that down. I'm not going to forget know? that again. And, it I was, said, it was, well, have it. and I remember this, <laughs> there was this old gal, she was a sweet old gal. She had a little bun in her hair and sensible shoes, the whole works. And she said, my friends and I find you inappropriately amusing. And I said, laugh. I said, thank you. I'll take that. She said, yeah. She said, you are very inappropriately amusing. <laughs> Perfect. It was great. It was great. You know, they don't forget me. Could you share some, any stories from your experience creating arrangements for like the Royal family and Elton John? You know, someone asked me if I've done flowers to the queen and I said, oh, girl, I've done flowers to many queens. Elton John, for example, which was really cool. You know, but you know, it's it's been it's been a, an incredible situation when when we got to do flowers for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and, and Prince Philip. Um, you know, we go through all the protocols and this, that, and the other about what she likes and doesn't like, and Canadian grown flowers as much as possible, and this, that, and the other. And I remember going to the Lieutenant Governor's house, where which is her official home when she comes to our province, and. Uh, putting the flowers up and there's flowers in the in the main entryway and up by the staircase and in the dining room and then this and then that. And then I went to the bedroom, the royal bedroom. It was this lovely. So, so I, I brushed the side of the bed and I said, ooh, his majesty does enjoy a fur mattress. <laughs> and look at the sheets. I said, oh, heavy thread cap, glorious. So I put the flowers down. And then Joe, there's me. And I'm, I'm I, again, I just think this is this is crazy. I'm just some guy from Shelburne, Nova Scotia. I'm doing flowers for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. And so anyway, I went to to the the royal bathroom. I thought, oh my heavens! So I get to put the flowers in the royal toilet, right? And there it is. There's the throne, right? <laughs> so I've got my cell phone like this, trying to get a picture, like as I'm pretending like like I'm almost sitting on the throne. Yeah. And up in the corner, I saw a little red light flash. I thought, oh, crap on a stick. That's the Secret Service, whoever her people are. They've got this place bugged, and there's a camera. And somewhere in the bowels of this building, they're looking at me. So all I could do was go, <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do, right? <laughs> yeah. So another time, I, was doing, I did flowers for um, Prince Charles and Lady Camilla. And... Uh, a lot of people have their ups and downs about Camilla. I think she's all right. So I got to meet them. So I've got a picture just as, and I, I had this jacket on. I love this jacket, this particular jacket. And I have a, a brooch. I always quite often wear a brooch or pins or that sort of thing. And, and uh, so this particular brooch on, it was a crown. And I've got it from, from one of the palaces in England when I was there. That's where I got this little crown brooch. I loved it. So I had it on. And I've got a picture just as she's holding her hand on like this. And she said, Neville, I'm quite intrigued by your brooch. And you know how things come out of your mouth? I don't know about you, but they just come out of your mouth before you know you've said them. And <laughs> anyway, I said, oh, thanks, my darling. Every queen needs a crown. And I thought, shit, she's oh, not going to get one, is she? Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. That's, that's... And all she did, she went, oh, 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 and backed up and away she went. And I, I thought, oh, no. So Joy, that was standing behind her, one of her ladies in waiting, who I knew, knew of her, I, I'd spoken with her a few times, 
And I said, oh, Joy, what have I done? And she said, oh, she said, the girls might have so much to talk about on the plane. She says, this is marvelous, marvelous. And I said, do you think I'll ever be invited to do anything for them again? She says, I wouldn't really say. <laughs> and off she went. So, so we'll see. We'll see. You know what? I can ask you a million questions about those stories. Uh, they all, I'm pretty sure they're all entertaining. I mean, they're entertaining right now. <laughs> uh, one of the things I really appreciate about you is like you're, you're, you're a wordsmith, man. You just fired them up all the time. And one of the things that I, I the first time we talked, I remember I used to thought I was unique because I was using this term as like, yeah, you know, flowers are the only thing that you need, you know, from the cradle to the grave and everything in between. And then when you got, when you said back to me, I was like, wait a minute, that, that sounds better. What was it that you said? Do you remember that? You mean from the womb to the tomb? Exactly. I was See, like, wait you know, a second. <laughs> flowers. And you, by the way, you are unique. We all are unique. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's okay. one of our slogans in the store. Flowers as unique as you are, because that's, that's what they should do you know but you know i always say flowers celebrate life from the womb to the tomb whether you're hatched matched or dispatched oh look at that you just made it better <laughs> yeah. See? i gotta write this stuff down but yours you rhymed know? so yours is definitely better so i've been well, using yours it. yours a little bit do you know joe when we talk about being unique there's I, one of the things that i use in my presentations outside of the floral industry is i will make a bouquet uh, just a hand-tied bouquet and talk about how each of the flowers represent people in the audience so I'll talk about um, a rose. We all have classic beauties that we rely on that, that are there for us, that, that give us such hope and inspiration and love and, and, and assurance. And then I'll hold up some hydrangea and put in the bouquet and say, look, this is it's just a bunch of fluff with a big name. You know, like we all work with someone who's just a bunch of fluff. And then I'll use some filler flowers and say there are people that are just fillers and people like carnations that are just, this is what carnations don't expect them to do anything else because this is what a carnation does. And so I use that in, in in my analogies for, for making um, a, a group feel more cohesive, because when you put them all together, they always make a great bouquet and they always make a group, great bunch of people. So when you talk about being unique, we're all unique and that's, that's, that's what's so wonderful. Imagine if we were all the same. Oh. Mm, that'd be pretty boring. Dull. <laughs> So you do a tons of shows, floral shows specifically, and, and, and how do you, I, I'm just curious, how do you get these gigs? I love to share the art of floral design. I think, you know, we've, we've, all, we've all sat in audiences and watched people that just go on and they drone on like a little horn and you think, oh my gosh, I wish something would happen, just something, a little bit of excitement, even if someone breaks wind or something so we can all giggle because it's so dull, so dull. Because, you know, here's the thing, information tells while a story sells, you know? And you can tell a story about the floral arrangement that you're making or the flowers that you've gotten and how, what, what it was like when you had them when you were a child or when you went to the farms in Colombia and helped pick them or do all those sorts of things or when you deliver them out to a lady because her, her, her husband, when he was alive, would always give her this particular flower or all those stories tell all those stories because that's that's what brings the joy and magic alive to flowers and that's that's how i've done so well with with speaking publicly both regionally and internationally um because i, I do tell stories with them because anyone can look something up on youtube or or whatever and say i want to know how to make a centerpiece well there it is there it is but you'll listen to people who can tell a story behind it as well and talk about the beauty of those flowers and show the passion and love that comes with them. And that's that's passion and love that comes with them. I mean, yeah, I'm good at what I do. Yeah, I know some stuff and yeah, I'm pretty talented, but I don't need to tell you all that. I just need to show you. So I wanna show you the beauty of the flowers. And that's the thing that, that I try to do more so than talk about how great I am, um, because really um, that kind of goes without saying, doesn't it? I'm very, I'm very humble, Joe. <laughs> but, you no, know, in all seriousness, um, the flowers should always be the star of the show and, and the, 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 the main focus on what we're selling. And whether it's, whether it's flowers or whether it's containers that the flowers are going to go in um, or vases, any sorts of vessels that I, or, or accessories that I work with um, that I, I have to sell or have to promote or like to promote, um, I always make sure that they are the backup dancers for the main element, which of course is the flowers. Speaking of stories, uh, every, every, all florists have interesting stories about, you know, customers uh, sending flowers or buying flowers from them. 
can you share any stories, any interesting stories of why someone uh, purchased flowers from your shop? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of them, Joe. And, you know, I, I think about the young fellow that would come into the flower shop and he was just a kid in school. And he would come in with a handful of change and, and he would buy a rose for his girlfriend. And sometimes he'd have enough money and sometimes he wouldn't. And sometimes I'd just give him a flower because I felt, I didn't feel sorry for him. I was just encouraging him because, you know, like flowers, you plant the seed and they'll grow. You do the same with your clients. And I didn't know it, but the day he came in and said, we're engaged. I said, oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations. And I met her and she had a rock on that I think she would have had to put her hand in a sling at night because it was so bloody big. And I didn't know, but they were, they were both wealthy, wealthy, wealthy families. It's just, you know, he was on his own and that he just used his own money. He was just doing that on his own. And he said, you didn't treat me like anybody else. And I said, well, I wouldn't have anyway. I would, and I wouldn't have, I don't, you know, I always say, it doesn't matter if you're spending $2 in our store or 200, you're going to get treated the same because it's that important. That $2 is the best money you've ever spent. So I said that to those kids and I got a massive wedding out of it, which was wonderful. You know, um, I had a lady just, just during the pandemic, um, you know, I, 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 I've seen a lot and I've, I've been through a lot in, in the industry and seen some terrible things and seen some glorious things as, as any of us in the industry that have been around for a while have. And I remember this young lady called me and she, she said her mother was in palliative care at hospice and she wasn't expected to live more than a week. And she said, I cannot go see her. She said, because I'm isolated and can't go and see her. She said, I'll never see my mother again. Yeah. And so I, she said, can you get flowers? I said, girl, I'll crawl through glass to get those flowers to her, which I, I didn't have to obviously, but I did, I did send her flowers. But it was so heart-wrenching to listen to that story. And, and you know, that's, that's when I, I know how important our industry is, whether you're cutting flowers at a farm in Ecuador, packing the flowers up in Miami, um, shipping them out of, out of Staldoon and Wholesaler in Ontario, or here in my little flower shop, or somewhere in Saskatoon or, or BC or whatever, you know, um, those flowers just, they, they, they console, they give so much. And when I heard her say that, she called me up and thanked me for it. You know, that was a glorious thing. Um, there was a lady years ago, there was two old, two old gals, two sweet old gals, you know, typical old ladies walking arm in arm down the road, each had a cane. And I stopped, I looked outside and there was some hibiscus outside of her store. And one was poking at one of the hibiscus with her cane and having a little story. And I had to go out because I, I love a story from old, I love listening to these old gals. So when I said, what's up ladies, what are you doing? Poking at my plants. And, and she said, well, <laughs> she said, my husband, my late husband, when he was courting me back in the day, she said, I was in Italy. She said, during the war, they assumed it was the Second World War. And she said, he would pick me a hibiscus off the shrub just down the road. She said, pick me and give me this flower every day. She said, you know, hibiscus only lasts a day. I said, yes, I know. She said, the only flowers only last a day. So every day he saw me, he would pick me this lovely flower. She said, every time I see hibiscus, I think of them. So needless to say, Joe, I picked a hibiscus off each of those plants and gave them to the ladies and said, you just enjoy those today. Well, the tears rolled down their faces and off they went. It was happy, glorious little thing. It really was. Anyway, fast forward for two or three years later, and I'd forgotten about it, frankly. It's just, you know, I do other things, so I'd forgotten about it. I got a lovely message in the mail, a little note from a lady. And she said, my mother died last month. She said, when I came to Halifax to clean out her apartment and clean up her things, she said, in her Bible was a pressed hibiscus. She said, with a little note on it, saying it came from you and what you did and how you, how she, and then she said, I, I remember the entire story about how my dad courted my mom. She said, it was absolutely wonderful. Isn't that cool? That's, that shows the power of that little thing. And that's, that's a pretty big, big deal. You know, when you, when you hear those sorts of stories that it's a massive thing. And then you have the, the people that you remember because they're a bit on the, a bit on the salty side, you know. Sometimes people are just poison and they just want to give it to you because they've just had enough and I'm just, I'm just so friggin' ugly. I gotta get this poison off me, so I'm gonna hand it over to you. Because sometimes when people have things that are out of their control, like their, the weather or the, their pants don't fit or their whatever, something's wrong because they're having a big event and something's not right. They can control how much strength they put around your throat when they choke you, right? Because you didn't get, you didn't get, and they better be, and they're not perfect. Yeah, whatever, whatever. 
but you know, you just you just smile and know that you know. It's like I said to the young lady one day that someone yelled at, you really yelled at her. There was an older guy yelled at this girl, and she I could see tears dripping off the end of her nose as she was doing something on the table. I went over and whispered in her ear, "Never you mind, darling. She'll be dead long before you." And she went, "You think so?" And I said, "Oh yeah, yeah." <laughs> and then she was fine. <laughs> wow. You know. That's amazing. Yeah, these are amazing stories. I got, I got to, I got to have a drink with you one day and just laugh. Like you're just, <laughs> you're a great storyteller, Neville. You know, you, you've been dealing with flowers and working with flowers for so long. Do you have any particular favorite flower that you always, you know, that's your favorite? Do you know, Joe, I'm, I, that's, that's two questions that I get asked a lot, a lot. Um, your, what's your favorite flower and can you eat it? A lot of men say, yeah, it's nice. Can you eat it? Sure you can. If you can shove, chop it up and shove it down your throat, eat it. Go right ahead. Should you eat it? That's a whole different story. But back to, back to the favorite flower part. No, I don't. I don't. I embrace every flower as it comes along. Every flower as it comes along. Um, you know, in, in nature, we, we're given flowers at particular times of year. And when, when the first crocus bloom in the spring and the snowdrops, they're my absolute favorite, absolute favorite. And those, the last little uh, pansies in the fall, late November that the frost has gotten several times, but they're still hanging on for dear life. Those are my favorites. You know, we can't wait for the peonies to bloom or the lilacs to come into flower, the, the wild lupins or all those sorts of things. They're all my favorites. So to say, I have to have this flower in my life, um, I'd be content with anything. I really would, um, because they're also beautiful. If you if you open your eyes and let them be beautiful, because they really are. So I, I always feel sad when I hear people say, "I hate a particular flower." You know, I, I've heard many people say, "I hate carnations." And you know, Joe, that's a generational thing. It is. It is. Your kids wouldn't hate gener hate carnations. They don't hate carnations. They got no reason to hate carnations. But my generation, um, and I'm a little bit older than me. Uh, that was the first flower that we generally saw at a funeral was a carnation. So like so many things in our lives where we are affected positively or negatively by things that happen between the age of two and 12. So any interactions, that's why some people are scared of spiders or snakes or, you know, apples or whatever it might be, you know, but flowers in particular. So when I, when I hear people say, I hate carnations, I'll say, you must have been scared by a carnation as a child, were you? Because, you know, grumpy old Aunt Fizz used to have carnations and I don't like her. She was mean. She used to pinch, you know, or whatever it might be. So we, we remember those flowers and um, good, bad and otherwise, you know, it's, it's like when I've, I've got a book on the go at some point, but it's flower stories. You know, when we talk about stories and so I can go to anybody and say, tell me a flower and tell me a history about it. What's your favorite flower? Do you have a favorite flower? Do you have a favorite flower? What's, just, what's your story behind it? And I'll hear everything from lilacs because that's what was at my grandmother's house and we used to go there for the summer and we picked them and someone else would talk about told me about the bird of paradise that she stole at a resort in cuba and i thought laughed about that and another lady said she had she loves white carnations and yellow um calla lilies because she's white and she married a chinese man and his family didn't like her because she was white and they, her family didn't like him because he was Chinese. So she makes white and yellow flowers together and use them in a bridal bouquet. Ha ha ha. And I thought, that was great. You know, so we have all those stories. <clears throat> so to have a favorite, no, no, I don't. I don't. I love a mixture of flowers. I love one kind of flower. I love orchids. I love them all, you know, glorious. They're food for the soul. And you know, we've been pretty hungry. Neville. I could talk to you for hours. This has been wonderful. Thank it's you so much. Ninety percent of 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 this podcast right now is you telling stories. So I'm just listening. I you know I, I want to grab my popcorn and just <laughs> just start eating them. Yeah, good. Because it's it's good. great. Well, you know, Joe, it's 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 been a pleasure to sit down and spend some time with you, and and of course the folks that are are tuning in as well. And um, I just I just want everyone to to continue to share love through the beauty of flowers because that's really an important thing. It really, is an important thing. Um, we don't realize how much power they have. And I think through the last few months in particular, we've seen how much power the, that a little bouquet can have. You know, when, when, I, when I sent flowers around the neighborhood and just dropped a, a rose in everyone's mailbox, 150 of them around, 
and just saw their smiles and their faces when they come by and they hold this flower and say, look what I got, you know? It was just a silly little flower, but you know, a silly little flower, nothing. It was a glorious thing to do and to have and to see those power. And when I think of the thousands and thousands and thousands, countless thousands of people that have been helped um, through this because of the power of flowers and because of what florists in our world have done for them, I am forever grateful and I truly am, truly am for all the efforts that so many florists and so many people in our floral industry, including you, have done to, to help uh, better other people's lives. It's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big deal. Absolutely. I mean, we're all lucky enough to be in an industry that's just full of this product that it's, you know, we have a physiological um, response to flowers. Flowers, it's in our DNA. We love flowers. Flowers are just pure happiness overall. So be, the fact that we're all working in this industry, I think we're very lucky. So, you know, we're pretty blessed. We really are, Joe. We really are. Absolutely. Awesome. So Neville McKay from My Mother's Bloomers in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Neville, where can people find you online? I, I do Instagram. My, my, my Mother's Bloomers is on Instagram. So mm-hmm. check us out because I'm always posting things on there. I post all my videos from, from television shows. They all go on there. Little clips of things that we've done as well as all the photographs and things. And of course, um, we're on Facebook and we're on Twitter as well. So and uh, you have such a great name that you don't even need to tell people like your URL or your domain, your website. It's just My Mother's Bloomers, period. And, you know, you're going to get your Instagram. There's only one My Mother's Bloomers, right? So you're going to get, they're going to find that's you. If they want to. I'm that's sorry? us. And, you know, there's, there, and there's only one Neville too. So look me up too. You know, Google me. It's lots of fun. I know you did it. Um, because because it's, it's, I forget sometimes. I, 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 I Google myself once in a while just to look back and just, just for a giggle as to, oh my gosh, I forgot I did that. Or I forgot I, I was writing for this magazine or that magazine. So it's kind of fun to, to, to look back and see what's, what's going on in the world. Neville, you're, you're very inspirational. So thank you for, thank for you. joining me. Take care, stay well. And like I said, share love through the beauty of flowers. Will do. Thank you so much for everything. All the best. All right. Take care. We want to help your business bloom. Check out more episodes of Flower Shop Secrets. Watch now on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for new episodes.